Matt Gates, how are you? Uh, great to be with you, my friend. And kind of the breaking news that just received on my phone, uh, House Republicans will be gathering right about the time we're done with this interview uh, to talk about where we go forward with our leadership. My goal is to get the most conservative Speaker of the House who can win, somebody that's got broad trust across the conference, someone who can get the job done. And you know, the real reason we had to get rid of Kevin McCarthy was that he wouldn't do a budget. He wouldn't have single subject bills that appropriate to different agencies. He wanted to do everything by continuing resolution and, and probably omnibus spending bill. So we want to liberate ourselves from that. The swap of Washington, D.C. is going crazy because they are not in complete and total control right now. And hopefully this gives us a great opportunity to put the interests of our fellow Americans first above the folks uh, who would really drive our country into more managed American decline. And, and I hope you could educate me, Matt, and, and my. And I'll call you Matt, but it's really Congressman Matt Gates. That's fine. But we're I, I buddies. I'm like calling you Matt because I think we're we're on a close enough. Yeah, buddies now. So listen, um, educate me and my fans because I have a great friend who I think is a brilliant guy. He's worth hundred million dollars. Businessman, conservative, rock rib Trump guy, and he was thrilled yesterday or two days ago when he heard Scalise was in. And I said, I don't think Scalise is the right guy. I think he's a rubber stamp of McCarthy. I think he's the wrong guy. And he said, oh, you're wrong. Scalise is very conservative. And now Scalise doesn't look like he's going to get it. Is Scalise the right guy? I think Jim Jordan would have been a better choice than Scalise, correct? Well, when presented with those two options, I voted for Jim Jordan in our conference meeting. He came up about seven votes short of being able to prevail in that election. But let me give you the tea here. McCarthy and Scalise do not like each other. They never liked each other. And you know when it started? When McCarthy went and huh. made that debt limit deal with Joe Biden, he totally cut out any of the conservatives on the negotiating team. He literally replaced his own majority leader as the chief negotiator with another Louisiana congressman, Garrett Graves, and with Patrick McHenry, who currently holds the gavel in the House. And those guys made a deal that failed to deliver any wins for conservatives and underwrote all of this Biden debt that we're now having to incur. So uh, that was really a, a challenge they had. Also, when McCarthy went and made a secret Ukraine deal, he cut Scalise uh, out of that. And, and now it may be some of McCarthy's supporters trying to deprive Scalise the gavel. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But those guys are not bosom buddies. They always had a good deal of tension with one another. Uh, and frankly, either Jordan or Scalise would be a monumental upgrade over McCarthy. We've got to have somebody that keeps their word, who tells the truth, who can be relied upon, and who could deliver wins. What, what the American people are tired of are these po political claims that we've solved every problem, we've secured the border, we've fired 87,000 IRS agents. Yeah. When people can see with Lies. their own eyes that that's, that is not the reality that we are currently living in, and we need a Republican Party that is more of a fighting force. You know, about uh, two and a half years ago, in January of 2020, it should be January 2021, uh, which was right after the election of 2020, I wrote a column, it was January 30th, 2021, and I said the next House Speaker should be Donald J. Trump. That's where all this started. Right after that, Bannon gave a speech and said, Donald Trump should be the House Speaker. Trump came on my show and said, you were the first with the idea, Wayne. Thank you, but it's not something I want. Then he came on my show again. He said, thank you, Wayne, I know it was your idea. I don't want to do it. And I said, you should do it. He said, no, I'm backing McCarthy. I said, giant mistake. He's a backstabber. He's no good. He's a rhino. And he said, that's OK. You know, if you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. That's literally what Trump said to me. None of them are any good. They're all backstabbers. So my question to you is, Matt, Trump could never do this. There's no way you could get the votes to make well, Trump I nominated him temporarily, at least. So, you know, I know, I, I, I know I listened to your great. show. I we talked about it, I think, on air a time or two, and I went to the floor, nominated Trump. It was not a movement that took off among Republicans at that time. I spoke with President Trump just yesterday in Palm Beach about it. He is laser focused on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. What he said to me is, if we don't win the White House back, if we do not get this border secure, if we right. do not restore the America's position in the world, it's not going to matter what's going on in the Congress. We have to have control of the executive branch so that these agencies of government aren't completely completely turned against the American people and their mission. And, and you mean, you know, we got to talk about what's going on in Israel right now. You know, Joe Biden's continued right. appeasement 
of Iran, of terrorist groups, has led us to this moment. And uh, I certainly hope that that conflict doesn't become, you know, a global conflict with other countries entering into it. World War uh, and III. certainly, yeah, I mean, we don't want to see that uh, for our, our dear ally Israel, and we certainly want to see them successful in the defense of themselves and their countrymen. Matt, I know you know I'm a big conservative, have been since the day I was born almost, since I was three years old, and my dad was one of the founders of the New York State Conservative Party. So I was raised in conservative politics, but you may not know that I'm a Jewish American. And so I love Israel. I'm sick by what I've been seeing. I was crying over the weekend. I can't believe those are my people. And, and they were, you know, just slaughtered. Uh, but putting that aside, I'm America first, right? As much as I love Israel, America's like here and Israel's there. America's number one for me. This is my country. And our border, you know, worry about Israel is like here. But what about what's going to happen to our country with a border open and all the terrorists coming in? I think we, have, we face a problem a thousand times worse than what Israel faces. They've got a wall and a closed border, and it just so happened, you know, they were asleep for a day and somebody got in. But our border is wide open. We are ripe for a massive terrorist attack. I am very concerned about tomorrow where we've had these global extremist groups right. call for day a day of, of jihad. Yeah, we do not want to see violence in our country. But you're right. The, the biggest thing that could precipitate that violence is a border policy that allows people in who could intend to do harm without any permission structure, without any vetting. And in Israel, they do take border security seriously and with good reason. We have to be there for our ally Israel because their enemies abroad are trying to exterminate them. They do not believe Israel should exist. On our border, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to reinstitute the Trump policies. Remain in Mexico, Title 42, right. safe third country, detain or remove. And if we put that policy portfolio together again, we can have a secure border and then we will have to focus on internal enforcement of our immigration laws because with the millions Biden's let in, securing the border alone is not going to be enough. We actually have to start getting the people who are doing harm and have the potential to do even greater harm out get them back out. to where they came from. Yeah. I, I don't know how, we, Matt, I don't know how we survive another year and a half. I mean, that's literally the elections next like November, but you don't get into office till the end of January 2025. So you're talking about almost 18 months from now, let's say 16 months from now, before Trump could take office, even if he does win, and we don't even know if he's going to win. If he loses, America's finished. But if he wins, you're 16 months away from now. I don't know how we survive 16 months with a completely open border. Well, that, that, that also is the reason that we had to remove Kevin McCarthy, because I saw a Republican Party in right. Congress Agreed. that wasn't really delivering and fighting. I heard Kevin McCarthy 18, or, or nine months ago say we were going to impeach Mayorkas. We haven't even sent him a subpoena. We haven't yeah, even introduced our, our, you know, uh, right. had hearings on those impeachments. And then they, they act like they're doing all this oversight over the Biden family. But we can see through that. They haven't even sent the first subpoena to Hunter Biden. Now, any, I'm sure you got lawyers, litigators who I are believe. watching this. You know you want to get that paper discovery out early because then you've got to have the time to litigate it. And if we only had two years of runway, we're really truncating our opportunity to get the truth before the American people. So you're, you're right. The one vestige of hope for the American people until we bridge to the next term of Donald Trump is the United States House of Representatives. And that's why we have to lean in. We have to use points of leverage. I don't think that we've really been using leverage well. We gave Biden the farm on no, the debt limit deal. Not. And then we've extended his spending and Nancy Pelosi's policies for an additional 47 days under the continuing resolution. The only way to use that leverage is to force every agency of government to defend their budget. And by the way, the thing that makes me so proud that you did this, by the way, Matt, is what did McCarthy do about the 87,000 new IRS agents? Basically nothing. He claimed he was going to get rid of them. And I think instead we have 86,000 instead of 87,000. I mean, the guy is a complete loser. He didn't accomplish anything. How can you allow them to build an army of IRS agents to destroy us and you get rid of 1,000 out of 87,000 and you call that a victory? That's not a victory. That's a loss, a massive loss. So you did the right thing. I hope we can find a conservative speaker, Matt. We're on the way out. I hear the music. It's great that you're with us. I hope you'll come back more often because 
You are a wonderful breath of fresh air.